Hello and welcome to the CSF Day 1, EULA 2023 highlights. My name is Xavier Mariette from uh, Paris Saclay University. This year, EULA promises to be busy as ever. And today we have some terrific session with a wide range of topics and data. In this podcast, I would like to review what I think are some of the key sessions and paper of interest relating RA, PSA, AXPER, and from the CSF perspective. I hope you find this post act both interesting and informative. So let's begin by array. I will highlight um, some presentations, including the impact of cardiovascular comorbidities on efficacy of tofacitinib versus TNF inhibitors in the very well known uh, oral surveillance study presented by Maya Bush, uh, a presentation of uh, EULA point to consider uh, for initiating therapies in patients with inflammatory arthritis with an history of cancer by Jacques-Éric Gottenberg, and a, a very interesting presentation from the Swedish registries regarding the survival of the patients after having a myocardial infarction. So let's begin by uh, oral surveillance. Uh, it's known that patients with RA have a history of cardiovascular uh, and are at higher risk of MACE when treated with tofacitinib. It was demonstrated in the oral surveillance. Uh, and there was no risk, uh, uh, no increased risk if patients with no history of cardiovascular disease. What is important in this presentation is that the odd ratio of remission and low disease activity were higher for patients receiving TOFA versus TNF inhibitors in patients with no history of cardiovascular disease. Uh, conversely, this odd ratio was similar in patients with a history of cardiovascular disease. So these findings provide the means to classify patients by risk, allowing TOFA to be considered as patients with no previous cardiovascular disease, regarding the fact there is no increase in safety concern, and possibly an increased rate of remission with TOFA versus TNF inhibitors in these subsets of patients. Second uh, important communication, the ULAR point to consider of the initiation of targeted therapy in patients with previous history of cancer. It's always a challenge to treat these patients with biologic. We don't know if really biologic are going to be safe in these patients with previous cancer. And this group formulated five overarching principles and eight points to consider relevant to the initiation of targeted therapies in these patients with inflammatory arthritis and an history of cancer. And you know that the knowledge has evolved over time. At the, during the 2000s, we were really frightened with anti-TNF. And now with time, 25 years after introduction of anti-TNF, numbers of numbers, new studies demonstrated that the risk of cancer was probably not increased. So probably the knowledge evolved. And now we are in the time that we can treat this patient with an history of cancer with biologics. This uh, presentation is also very important. It is the uh, evolution of patients after a myocardial infection. You know that our patients are at risk of cardiovascular disease. And in this very large registry from Sweden, as you can see, 200,000 patients, it was demonstrated that the risk of death after a myocardial infection was increased in the patients who were taking steroids. And if the patient were taking DMARDs or anti-TNF, it decreases the risk of myocardial infection. Let's move now to psoriatic arthritis. Uh, there is uh, another session uh, around your point to consider. You are going to see this abstract by Saboti. And we also uh, are going to discuss the determinants of radiologic progression, and last, uh, an interesting report of uh, a comparison between Ixekizumab and Nadalimumab. So firstly, the point to consider for the definition of a clinical imaging feature, suspicious of progression to psoriatic arthritis. So the idea was to find what are the items associated with progression. And uh, as you can see, 
patients with psoriasis may develop psoriatic arthritis at different time points. And so the collaboration between dermatologists and rheumatologists is important uh, for uh, being able to determine uh, this uh, progression and to be able to treat these patients uh, as soon as they progress to psoriatic arthritis. So what are the determinants of radiographic progression in early psoriatic arthritis? Uh, this study has looked at different items and uh, it demonstrates that the baseline clinical determinants for radiographic progression are older age, smaller joints, erosive disease, GSN score, and baseline CRP levels. And interestingly, it really looks like the factors associated with radiographic progression in rheumatoid arthritis. So this study uh, is interesting because it's going to compare the effect of ixekizumab and adalimumab at the individual digit level with nail and distal IPD involvement in patients with psoriatic arthritis. It will be presented by uh, David McGonagall, Dennis McGonagall, sorry. And uh, the results, as you can see, uh, shows that uh, the in patients who are included in this clinical trial, which was called Spirit H2H with psoriatic arthritis, and these patients who had nail involvement and involvement on distal interphalangen uh, joints at baseline, these patients, when they are, they are treated with exekizumab, have a better outcome of nail involvement than in patients treated with adalimumab. So that's an interesting uh, message. The third um, aspect, interesting um, domain uh, explored in this day one of EULA is uh, axial spondyloarthritis. And there are six uh, presentations. I'd like to bring your attention uh, to this presentation about clinical aspects and treatment of uh, AXPA and predictors uh, of uh, evolution. There are also two presentations on Secukinema and the uh, lastly presentation about the evolution of the German JSPIC cohort, which is really interesting. And uh, a last presentation about patients uh, going to the, rheumatolo the rheumatologist for a back pain. So the first presentation comes from uh, ASAS and uh, the idea, the objective of ASAS was to uh, define uh, the early axial spondyloarthritis. So the results are not very surprising. You can see the results on the slide. It is a definition uh, uh, of symptoms of less than two years. Axial symptoms should include spinal buttock pain or morning stiffness and should be considered by rheumatologists related to AXPA. And uh, finally, there was not real consensus for the definition, but it will be interesting to see how the group thought about uh, early AXPA. This study uh, presented uh, by Xenophon Baraliakos uh, looked at the effect of uh, secukinumab versus adalimumab on the radiographic progression in patients with radiographic AXPA. So it is a phase 3b study, a double blind a placebo control study. And uh, interestingly, the uh, radiographic outcome were the outcome was no progression. And as you can see on the slide, in the three groups of this randomized clinical trial, the patients with no progression, the percentage of patients were the same with CQ150, CQ300, and Adalimumab. So there is the same rate uh, of no progression between uh, anti-IL-17 antibody and the anti-HNF antibody. Uh, this presentation uh, looked at the predictive factors uh, of uh, low disease activity in patients treated with secukinumab in uh, clinical practice, in common clinical practice. And uh, actually the results show that the most 
influential predictor of low disease activity, as you can see, uh, is BASDAI, followed by uh, other uh, items uh, collected at pretreatment, uh, which are CRP value and uh, the uh, ADAS score. And actually, they, they used artificial intelligence uh, to explore these predictive factors of LDA. And uh, as you can see, uh, BASDAI and ASAS HI and number of pretreatments were the main predictive factors of low disease activity in these patients treated with secukinumab for uh, AXPA. Uh, the uh, same type of studies uh, was made by the uh, people from the JESPIC uh, cohort, which is a German cohort of patients with uh, early spondyloarthritis, and they looked at the factor associated with remission in this cohort. And uh, as you can see, uh, the factors uh, associated uh, with a lower uh, odd ratio of remission was female sex, older age, B27 negativity, current and history of psoriasis, of steroid use, CSDMAR, uh, and higher NSAID intake. Interestingly, it is the first time that the uh, history of psoriasis was associated with a lower odds of achieving remission in early AXPA. In this uh, oral presentation by Dr. Marquez, uh, the uh, question is interesting because it is the question of patients refer to the rheumatologist for back pain, for chronic back pain of less than two years duration. And uh, the objective of the study was to uh, assess what will be the diagnosis of these patients and what proportion of these patients with back pain of less than two years will have a diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis. And actually, it's uh, uh, pretty high because one third of these patients with chronic, chronic back pain for less than two years and refer to the rheumatologist as definite uh, axial spondyloarthritis. Uh, and clearly it demonstrates that it's worse to refer these patients to the rheumatologist. And the uh, last, um, uh, presentation, oral presentation on uh, spondyloarthritis is uh, ask a question which is important. Is it necessary to repeat assessment of spondyloarthritis feature in a patient with chronic back pain suspecting of spondyloarthritis? Uh, and as you can see, doing again the exams for assessing a diagnosis for spondyloarthritis is uh, very uh, poorly uh, useful because you had a definitive diagnosis of arthritis of SPA in 32% of patients at baseline. And if you repeat the exam uh, at two years, very few new patients had a diagnosis of spondyloarthritis. So to conclude, I hope you have enjoyed this roundup of day one data. I hope it will give you a willingness to access to this presentation. You can also download our EULA 2023 highlight brochure from cytokinesignaling.com to see the abstract that we have selected for you for the whole of the Congress. And make sure to tune in tomorrow, Thursday, where Dr. Sofia Ramiro will continue with the CSF Day 2 highlights. Enjoy the Congress. Bye-bye.